10 second warning. Everyone's in place, makeup's on in the front row. Welcome to our Gilbert Town Council October 16th, 2014 meeting. I officially call the meeting to, to order. We will begin with an invocation. As noted on the agenda, the invocation may be offered by a person of any religion, faith, belief or non-belief, as well as council members. A list of volunteers is maintained by the town clerk. An interested person should contact the clerk for further information. The invocation will be offered by Pastor Ken Bertrand of the Bridge Church. Pastor Ken, thank you for being here. And again, we appreciate that nice slogan on the church that no perfect people allowed. That's why I'm allowed in. All right, thank you, please. <laughs> Thanks, I'm Kent, uh, my family and I live in Gilbert and I'm the pastor of the bridge and it's an honor to be here. Will you all join me in prayer? God, thank you for today and thank you for the city. Thank you for the blessing that it is in my life in my family's life and in the life of the bridge church. I just pray now, Lord, as we meet tonight, that you would bless it back. Bless this city, Lord. You say in James 1, 5, if any of us lack wisdom, we can ask you who give generously without finding fault. And so I just pray that your wisdom would fill this place. I pray for Council Member Peterson, Ray, Taylor, Daniels, and Cooper, for Vice Mayor Cook and Mayor Lewis, that you just fill them with wisdom and insight and help them lead our city well. And I pray you would bless this city, Lord. Keep it safe and free from crime. Keep jobs coming, the economy going. Give good schools to this city, Lord. Great schools to Gilbert. And I just pray for a sense of community that would just be a model for our state and our country as you bring us together. And just bless tonight's meeting, Lord. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you again. Pastor Kent, thank you. Councilmember Victor Peterson, which scout will be leading us in the pledge? Sawyer, Sawyer McCade is going to help us with that, and uh, we'll go ahead and hand the mic to him. Thank you. And we invite those in council chambers to please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you for very much. And uh, what we're going to do now, we're, we're so grateful to have you guys here. Thank you. We're glad that you're learning more about being, I'm going to guess, citizens in the community, part of maybe a merit badge requirement. We're glad you're here. Um, what we're going to do is um, we're going to pass the microphone down, and we would love it if you would just give us your name, your troop, and your rank. And then what I'm going to do, if that's too much, you know what? Let's just do your name and your rank real quick. And then I'm going to also give you a copy of the U.S. Constitution. We encourage you to study that. And uh, it's a great blessing to us in this country. So anyway, with that, I'll pass it down. Uh, Sean Shepard, Scoutmaster. Mm -hmm. Forest Line, second class. Sorry, McCabe Scout. Michael Greer, Senior Patrol Leader. Rex Oliver, Assistant Patrol Leader. Brett Coley, Scout. Atro Patel, second class. Carson Richmond, Tenderfoot. Jaron Bryce, Tenderfoot. Camrush, Tenderfoot. Gabe Petrie, Star. Liam Petrie, Life. Brett Bryce, Life. Andrew Westberg, Star. Tyler Hill, Life. Wyatt Hastings, second class. Connor Vicker, second class. Caleb Sherman, star. Kent Garner, first class. Jacob Bloom, first class. Diego Root, star. Travis Hunt, scoutmaster. Ethan Breinholt, star. Skyler Hales, life. Darren Sparks, assistant scoutmaster. I think they deserve a big round of applause for being here, and thank you for your help. You guys may be seated. Thank you. Thank you, as Councilmember Peterson said, for attending tonight. Our deputy clerk will now conduct the roll call. Mayor Lewis. Here. Vice Mayor Cook. Here. Councilmember Cooper. Here. Councilmember Daniels. Here. Councilmember Peterson. Here. Councilmember Ray. Here. Councilmember Taylor. Here. A quorum is present. Thank you. 
Agenda item number one, Council Member Daniels. Thank you, Mayor. On behalf of the Mayor and the Town of Gilbert, we do wish to proclaim Friday, October 24th, 2014 as Food Day. And this actually is in promotion of healthier diets. It's a sustainable family farms and local agriculture, which we have many of in the town of Gilbert, and access to healthy food. So we um, are excited to do this proclamation tonight. And with that, Mayor, I turn it back to you. Thank you, Mayor. For agenda item number two, we have a proclamation and I'd like to invite Mary Jo Kuzmik, if she's here, to join me. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Is there someone else that we should have with us? Chief Dorn? I don't see him here. Well, let's proceed. So October's... Pro uh, October is Prevention Month, and so this proclamation has two parts to it. So I'm going to read um, a couple of the parts here, and then just ask you to see if you have anything else to add. We're, we're glad to present this to you. The first is with our GAIN organization. So Gilbert residents have the opportunity to participate, to participate in Prevention Month uh, in Red Ribbon Week uh, through the GAIN organization. GAIN stands for Getting Arizona Involved in Neighborhoods. So Saturday, October 18th, has been designated as Gilbert's Gain Day. And so Gain is a program encouraging neighbors to gather together in an effort to heighten crime awareness, build better community relations, and strengthen community support for public safety. So Gilbert Police Department, in partnership with Target and SRP, will provide neighborhood leaders who commit to hosting a neighborhood party event uh, with various items um, to help move forward awareness in that effort for our neighbor, strengthen our neighborhoods. Okay, so that's part one. Part two is a red ribbon or say no to drugs week. And that is by proclamation October 23rd through the 31st here in Gilbert. And that is awareness of course um, of illicit drugs and the use and the harm that it does in our community. So we wanted to raise awareness. And would you add anything here to uh, the community uh, in regards to these two items? Sure, we look forward every year to being able to recognize locally National Crime Prevention Month here in Gilbert by putting on extra events throughout the month for the citizens here in Gilbert and hope that everybody participates. And we have a really good website. If anybody ever needs any prevention materials, go to uh, gilbertaz.gov forward slash police and go to the crime prevention site and look up anything that you'd like on identity theft, on drug prevention and awareness, on um, getting to know your neighborhoods, neighborhood block watch, et cetera. We have a wide variety of programs that are really helpful also for business owners besides just the general citizens here in Gilbert. Well, thank you. On behalf of Mayor and the Town Council, we appreciate the efforts that you're doing to help us to uh, be the one of the safest cities, second safest, and this will move us to number one next year. So thank you. Join me in thanking her. Thank you, Mayor. We'd like to invite Ken Stroh back up. He's the Executive Director of the League of Arizona Cities and Towns, and um, we're grateful he would be here with us. He's one of the, he represents an organization that is a great partner with the Town of Gilbert, and uh, we appreciate our relationship with the League. W uh, Ken, would you mind maybe introducing yourself a little bit more and telling us about the impact of cities and towns here in Gilbert, in the state of Arizona? <laughs> Thank you, Councilman. And uh, good evening, Mayor Lewis and other members of the Council. Yes, the League of Arizona Cities and Towns is the representative for all 91 incorporated cities and towns in the state of Arizona. And we work at the legislature with the governor's office and with state agencies. We also develop model ordinances and best practices and do trainings and education for elected officials and for staff. And we're also talking about the great services that cities and towns provide 24 hours a day all across the state. 
and uh, we call this campaign AZ Cities at Work because we really believe cities and towns are the level of government that's closest to the people and the level of government in the state that really does work efficiently and provides uh, everything from water and streets and parks to uh, police and fire and all those services. So, we, And we really appreciate you doing the proclamation on Cities and Towns Week. We are happy to do it, pleased to do it, and pleased to be involved. And one of the, you mentioned some of the points that are in this proclamation. One of the ones that caught my attention, and I, and for those of us that are here or watching, uh, hits home specifically, is it says, whereas through participation and cooperation, citizens, community leaders, local businesses, and municipal staff can work together to ensure that services provided by the town of Gilbert can remain exceptional elements of the quality of life of our community. And that really is true. We work together. It's a partnership. The community, its citizens, the, the staff, and the many others that are involved. And so we, uh, we love being part of a great community, and we love having partners like you. Uh, so we are, you know, I'll just read this part here. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town of Gilbert joins with the League of Arizona Cities and Towns and fellow municipalities across the state of Arizona in declaring October 19th through the 25th, Arizona Cities and Towns Week, also here in Gilbert, Arizona, and that's signed by the mayor. So thank you very much for your partnership. Mayor, is there anything you'd like to add? I know you're heavily involved with the League. So to our scouts, this is not the President of the United States, but pretty close. The President of the League of City is someone that is very helpful to all the cities in the state, and so we appreciate him being here very much. And Let's do our picture. Our special guest related to Constitution Week, if you could please come forward. To my right, and I'm going to give the microphone to Vice Mayor Cook in just a moment, but to my right are the three key organizers, and there's a fourth who cannot be here, and we have certificates of appreciation for them, which Vice Mayor Cook will reference. In this country, in the United States of America, our Constitution Week celebration has been noted as the largest in the country, and it is a great event, and that is because of hundreds of volunteers and some key organizers to my right. And so we thank the three of you and appreciate all the efforts. And even tonight, as all the scouts receive their copy of the Constitution, that's just a key part of what you do to make sure that we appreciate that and for future generations they have an appreciation too. But, Vice Mayor Cook, what do you have here? Well, Mayor, I like to read our, a certificate of appreciation for all your wonderful efforts here in the community and for the state with sincere appreciation for your significant contributions in helping to plan and execute the Town & Gilbert 2014 Constitution Week USA celebration, this citation is presented as a token of appreciation from the grateful Town Council for your continuing efforts to remind people of the freedom and liberty that came to us as a result of the Constitution. And with that, can we have a wonderful round of applause for your team and all your efforts. Before we do the picture, I'm just going to pass the microphone to each of the three. And if you could give your name and how many years you have lived in Gilbert. I'm Barbara Stoll, and I've been in Gilbert for 15 years, and prior to that, Chandler, the rest of my life, so I've been here a long time. I'm Beverly Bentley, and I've been here so long I can't remember, but it's been 20 to 25 years. Thank you for this opportunity. I've lived in the town of Gilbert for six, 17 years now, but my grandfather was born in the old Highland area uh, up at Guadalupe and, and uh, Cooper Road. And so we've been here well over 100, and he was born in 1898. So we, I figure my family's been here since the late 1800s.
we now have a couple of special guests. Now, I see them right out the door. I may need to get some help. Well, if you can just open the door and Mr. Henderson, tell him it's time to come in. And Ethel and Gloria, if you could come forward. Dan Henderson is our Director of Economic Development. I'm going to give him the microphone. If you could introduce, I think we've got three special guests, and if the two of you can come right down here. Uh, the scouts are definitely going to be interested in, well, all three, but one in particular. But uh, Dan? Thank you, Mayor Lewis. Members of the council, I'm delighted this evening to pre present to you a couple of individuals from St. Xavier University. We have, as the mayor said, three individuals or three uh, uh, three iconic individuals from the University of St. Xavier. We have General Counsel Kathleen Reinhardt, and we have Dean of the Nursing Stu School, Dr. Gloria Jacobson, and of course, we have Champ, the Cougar mascot for the St. Xavier University. And if you can't see it, the intent of the, the mascot here is to, is to sort of represent the partnership between not only Gilbert, but also the state of Arizona and St. Xavier University and the state of Illinois and the city of Chicago. And so on this side, you've got a couple of iconic representations, certainly the Gilbert Water Tower, as well as the St. Xavier University Arch. On this side, what you have is the Gilbert logo and of course the, the crest of the St. Xavier University. The front of, of CHAMP here is the state flag of Illinois, and we have in the back end here the state flag of Arizona. Mayor, members of the council, with that I'd like to present Kathleen Reinhardt. Thank you very much, Mayor and Dan and Mr. Cook. Uh, it's a very, uh, very special moment to be here tonight. And I'm here uh, along with Gloria Jacobson on behalf of President Christine Wiseman and all of the other members of the St. Xavier community. We've reached uh, quite a threshold moment uh, in the collaboration between St. Xavier University and the town of Gilbert, one uh, about which we are very proud in addition to being able to watch the sunset over the new construction down the road. Uh, we want to present to the mayor uh, the a copy of the license that was recently bestowed on St. Xavier University to now officially begin the work in the state of Arizona uh, for undergraduate and graduate programs uh, and to uh, really to be to set in motion a very long-standing partnership between St. Xavier University and the town of Gilbert and we wanted to make sure that you had a copy for your office I also will include in here uh, some remarks from President Wiseman, uh, just really taking a little look back over the past two years and all of the efforts in working together to reach this particular moment. But it is a, a very wonderful moment to hand you a copy of the license for St. Xavier, and we're on our way. All right, we'll do a historic picture. Do we do Champ in the front? Yeah, we better get Champ in the front of this.
I'm just confirming with my Vice Mayor Cook whether or not we have any communication from citizens, and it doesn't appear that we do. Let me just check in the council chambers. We do have some for agenda items, but just to confirm, were there any citizens that we wish to participate in communication from citizens? Okay, we'll move on to the consent calendar. Vice Mayor Cook, what requests do we have on the consent calendar? Mayor, we're going to pull agenda items 10 and 12 tonight. Any others? That's it for tonight. Related to the other consent items, I will entertain a motion. Mayor, I'd like to move that we approve agenda items 5 through 9, 11, and 13. With that motion, is there a second? So, so, or a second, sorry. Thank you. With that motion, second, please vote. That's approved with the 7 0 vote. Agenda item number 10. Councilmember Peterson. Mayor, I only pulled that because uh, we did get an updated uh, agenda item, but it included both versions of the plat. I just wanted to be able to move that we approve the amended version of it, the new version. So with that, I'm ready to make a motion unless there's other comment. I thought I heard a motion there. I was going to second it. <laughs> I move to approve the, uh, the plat as amended. Second. Thank you. With that motion and second, please vote. That's approved with a 7 0 vote. Thank you. Agenda item number 12. And we will turn over to Council Member Daniels. Thank you, Mayor and Vice Mayor. Um, when I looked at this agenda item, I just had one item of concern. If you'll recall, we actually voted on this item several months ago um, as it related to the undergrounding of U uh, 12 KV lines. And we determined at that time with a vote that we were not going to be able, we were not going to require the um, property owner to underground those KV lines upon development. But when I looked at the final map of dedication, we didn't, we weren't reserving any type of easement to allow for future undergrounding. If we so desired to do that, we had a discussion at that council meeting about perhaps um, undergrounding those at a later date in collaboration with other projects that may be going on in that same area. So um, with the help of Mike Hamlin, I wish to approve this motion with an amended, um, and, and so I move to approve the map of dedication for American Orchard Senior Care, located on the southeast corner of Lindsay and Guadalupe Road, subject to a revision in the map to include a dedication to the town of a utility easement sufficient to permit the potential future burial of the power lines along the south side of Guadalupe Road. And so I make that motion. Um, there is no financial impact to something like that at this time. It just gives us the option to not have to go back later to, re to uh, obtain an easement. It would just give us that option. So no financial impact, but. Thank you. Other discussion, Council Member Ray? My understanding, Council Member Daniels, is that the applicant is okay with this as well. Is that correct? I defer to, I think, our attorney, Mike Hamlin, had that discussion, and so I deferred that question to town staff. Uh, Council Member, or uh, excuse me, Mayor Lewis, Council Member Ray, Council Member uh, Daniels, we have reached out to the applicant, and they are agreeable to putting an eight foot easement along their north boundary line inside their property. Second. Okay. Thank you. With that motion and second, please vote. That's also approved with a seven of vote. Thank you. We move to the public hearing. Agenda items 14 through 20. Vice Mayor Cook, we do have some requests to speak on some of the items. Yes, Mayor, 17 and 22. 22. And to council, in addition to 17 and 22, are there some of the public hearing items that we wish to have discussed? Um, 16 for me. Okay. Mayor List, 22 isn't a public hearing as far as... Oh, that's right. That's administrative. Yeah. 22 is administrative. Okay. So it would be... So 14, 15, 18, 19, 20. We do not have individuals that wish to speak, nor council members. Okay. So as noted on the agenda...
that those individuals that wish to speak at the public hearing were given an opportunity to fill out a card and that we will now open the public hearing on, on these items. And Vice Mayor Cook, let me clarify one more item. We were given up on the dais on agenda item number 18 and it looks like that we could have a motion to continue that to December 18, 2014. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. So let's, um, let's take care of agenda item 18 right now before I open the public hearing on any of the other items. Mayor, I move that we continue item 18 until the December 18, 2014 council meeting. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. With that motion and second, please vote. That's approved with a seven of vote, thank you. So uh, at this time, I open the public hearing for agenda items 14, 15, 19, and 20. And I close the public hearing for agenda items 14, 15, 19, and 20, and we'll entertain a motion. Mayor, I move that we approve agenda items 14, 15, 19, and 20. Is there a second? Second. With that motion and second, please vote. Those items are approved with a 7 0 vote. I now open the public hearing on agenda item number 16. And for the public, if we could have an overview from town staff on agenda item 16. Thank you, Mayor Lewis, members of town council. Uh, bear with me as I quickly pull up the PowerPoint. Uh, Mayor Lewis, town council members, this is the first batch of an overall land development code cleanup that was initiated by the planning commission this past summer. Um, this first batch is essentially what staff feels are kind of the, the low hanging fruit, if you will, uh, some of the easier items on a very extensive list of cleanup items we have for the land development code. Uh, just by way of background, these items have come to us from various members of the community, um, various members of the business community, staff, elected officials, planning commissioners. Uh, so we, we do have a, a very long list uh, of what staff sees as relatively minor but useful technical uh, corrections to the land development code. So again, I'll quickly go through these first 10 and then we can discuss uh, uh, what issues may exist. These cleanup items, if you will, essentially break down in, into four different categories. We're correcting where we think we have over-regulation, conflicting regulation, regulations that no longer meet kind of contemporary land use issues, or in some cases we actually have errors in certain regulations. Uh, these next two slides quickly show you the, the, the topical areas we're addressing with these 10 subcomponents. The first one, A1, is a proposal to extend the business hours for medical marijuana facilities. This item was actually opposed by the Planning Commission. So the Planning Commission's recommendation to the Town Council was to leave the operating hours alone for medical marijuana and then approve items A2 through A10 as recommended by staff. Uh, Drive-through facilities, we have a couple of different places in the land development code where we attempt to address uh, the location of the actual drive-through aisle and its relative location to residential. So this, again, is, is really a cleanup item, item that clarifies what staff is currently enforcing when it comes to drive-through aisles and adjacent residential. Uh, A3 is a completely technical cleanup item. Right now, we currently say your minor land division expires after two years. What clearly we mean to say is if it's not recorded after a certain date, it would automatically expire. Uh, part A4 comes from us, uh, from the business community. It makes a lot of sense where we have employment districts, light industrial type uses. Uh, obviously, there's a supply chain benefit. There's a business synergy benefit to allowing non-retail employment type uses to have some type of accessory retail use on their site, whether they're selling their own product, products within their supply chain that their customers care about, et cetera. So th this seems like a, a good idea. Uh, this private open space screening for multifamily part A5 here, the, the code would otherwise allow a three foot wall. The development community has asked that they be allowed to go to a, down to a three foot wall. Currently, the land development code says it must be a minimum of four feet tall. And what we're talking about is ground floor apartment units, their patio space 
we have a, a screening separation requirement from the common areas to the actual patio itself. So we're simply suggesting that that height could be dropped down to three feet without any you know, negative impact. The detached building definition, uh, a little uh, a little hard to work in certain situations, so we simplified the, the, the detached building definition to simply say buildings that um, are not permanently fastened to each other are indeed detached. Guest quarters, uh, th this is a, um, a good smart growth uh, text amendment, if you will. So part A7 allows for additional opportunities for, for a, a guest quarter or a carriage house in this specific instance. We would allow a guest quarters above a garage. Guest quarters are differentiated between a second dwelling unit by the lack of kitchen amenities. We have other provisions in the land development code for single family parcels that want to add a second unit. They go through a use permit process, then you can add your essentially guest quarters with a kitchen. Uh, accessory structures, this is essentially an error in the land development code. Uh, the IRC, the building code that covers residential development, allows for a 200 square foot structure before a permit, permit is required. The commercial code is the one that requires the 120 square feet, so this is the residential section we're looking at. We should have the IRC requirement in the land development code, uh, not the IBC. Uh, again, just a, a, an easy allowance that, um, you know, pe people tend to prefer to have this uh, ability if you have an interior lot, so there isn't an issue of uh, essentially corner lot streetscape issues. If you want to provide an extra paved parking area on your lot for that third car, we'll allow you to do that in your side yard under certain conditions. And finally, uh, Mayor and Council, the business community has been very adamant about us giving more flexibility for tower and freeway signage, currently only allowed in the commercial districts. The business community and staff agree that it would be acceptable, appropriate in many, in many locations for an office or employment, business park type use, or even a public facility institutional use like a university uh, to be able to do these types of signs. Uh, so with that, again, staff's recommendation, of course, is our initial recommendation, which is A1 through A10, including the extension of medical marijuana facility hours. And again, just uh, for clarity purposes, the Planning Commission recommended A2 through A10. Thank you. Vice Mayor Cook, were there any requests from the public to speak on agenda item 16? There were none. Okay. To the council, any discussion, any questions you'd like to ask at this point? Vice Mayor Cook. Mayor, um, I'm more interested in the operating hours of the mar medical marijuana facility that we have in Gilbert. I, I did have the opportunity to, you know, visit the facility um, to understand, you know, what their product and how they offered that, and um, it reminded me of a very, very professional operation. And one of the discussions I had with the owner and operator of the uh, facility was the need to have an extended amount of hours because some of their patients um, and customers that work during the day, it makes it very difficult for them to acquire um, you know, the product that the, the medical marijuana facility provides. And in fact, I believe the owners would like to have it extended a little bit longer. And as you can see from the council communication, the numbers of op operating hours with our neighbors, and the one that I'm more interested in focusing on is the one in Mesa, where the operating hours are from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. So in my thinking, uh, I feel like you know, since it is a business in Gilbert and, you know, they want to provide uh, an opportunity for extended hours, I'm open and going to the 9 p.m., you know, time frame with that. So what has been proposed is to replicate Phoenix, which is just 7 p.m. Right. Well, again, remember the, the, the planning and zoning did not approve of, of, of the time. Right. The 7 p.m., I think, is uh, It's more coming from, from town. Right. Town staff. Okay. And I talked to staff about the extending to 9 p.m., and staff didn't have any objection to that. And, and then, again, Chief Dorn could even share that the facility, from a crime perspective, I don't think there's been any incidences that has you know, ever occurred there. Uh, so, again, it's a very safe, well-run well facility. Thank you. Council Member Peterson. Mayor, I'm also in favor of the added hour, and I just wanted to make a quick comment about all the other changes. Um, I really appreciate it. I think these are 
well done and uh, a great idea, and I just appreciate everyone who's had a part in it, so thank you. Any other comments? Councilmember Taylor? Thank you, Mayor. I want to thank staff for the time that they put on. I think there's a lot of good things here. Um, I, relative to the dispensary, I, I do think that the planning discussion had some good um, conversations there. I made a few phone calls and um, read a lot of the notes. Um, and I, I sort of agree with their conclusion. I know it was a split decision, but um, you know, I would, I would certainly support just leaving it how it is today um, at, the, at an end time at 6 p.m. So it sounds like not listening to hearing from everyone, but that we're feeling comfortable with all the items and it might just be a matter of the time. So I'm hearing keep it the same, go till nine, go till seven. Council member Cooper and Daniels and Ray, jump in. I'd prefer to keep it the same. Council member Daniels. I um, actually don't have a, a real strong opinion, Mayor Lewis, on this agenda item. I, I think that we are safe keeping it at how it is now or extending the hour as staff recommended. I'm not really in favor of going till nine. Okay. Council Member Ray? I'm fine with six or seven. Okay, let's see. What am I at? Uh, <laughs> Well, to Vice Mayor Cook, thank you for the suggestion of 9 p.m. in support of the business. It doesn't sound like there's a lot of additional support to that. I did read and was okay with going to seven. We have two pretty strong for six or flexible for seven? Six. Six? I'd like to stay at six. Okay, you'd like to stay at six. So real strong for seven? Okay. I could just make a motion. Is that all right? Okay, let's do it. I move to approve uh, item 16 as presented by staff. Is there a second? Second. There's a second, okay. Second. Mayor, may I amend the motion there? Please. I move that we approve all of the items uh, presented to us by staff except for A1 with a change to, or to leave, leave it as the Planning Commission recommended. Is there a second to that amendment? Second. Okay. Any other discussion on that? Okay. Let's vote on the amendment. Okay. That is approved with a 4-3 vote. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Now we have to vote on the main motion. Now let's vote on the main motion. <laughs> As amended, Mayor. As amended. Meaning as amended, yes. Thank you. Any discussion on that before we vote? And, and just to clarify, this would be the, the original motion? So it would be my motion minus the extended hour. So in other words, it would be basically uh, 2 through 10 would be approved, and number 1 wouldn't. And what would the hours be on number 1? Just to leave it at six, I think. Eight to six. There are motion to amend. Six Mayor, members of the council, that's correct. Okay, so we're voting. A would be to six p.m. Yes. Okay. All right. Let's vote. We're there. Thank you. The next. And let me now close the public hearing on agenda item sixteen and open the public hearing on agenda item number. 17. Vice Mayor Cook, we did have some requests on 17, is that correct? And so we'll look to town staff to give a brief overview of 17 first. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Members of town council, uh, just very quickly, uh, White Fence Estates is a proposed rezoning of approximately 6.0 acres located south of the southwest corner of 130th Street, 130th Street and Warner Road. The site was actually rezoned uh, very recently in 2013 for the 27 lot uh, subdivision that has actually been recorded and, and we'll show you an aerial of that in a second here. The applicant is not requesting any change to the subdivision layout itself, um, the dimensions of the lots, the access, the circulation, or any other critical component of the, of the subdivision design. Uh, the proposed density through this SF6 PAD application, and I'll get into uh, the details of the PAD here in a minute, is just under four units per acre, which is consistent, as you can see, with the general plan designation uh, for this site. 
So the uh, request this evening going from SF6 to SF6 PAD is necessary to accommodate the product that is proposed for this subdivision, uh, which you know in general is tending to, to maximize the lot, give, give more livable area uh, to the community and make up for the you know, loss of rear yard, loss of side yards by you know, providing more open space opportunities, centralized open space opportunities, common open space opportunities. So the specific deviations that are being proposed here uh, are reflected in this table and we can just quickly walk through them. They're actually increasing the uh, minimum lot depth from 100 feet to 110 feet. There are some slight deviations to how we uh, measure or qualify what can be in the front setback and then reducing that front setback down to 10 feet for side entry garages or livable space currently uh, 20 or 15 feet would be or excuse me 20 feet would be required uh, the lot coverage minimum is being raised for all product types so single story would allow be allowed to have a 55 percent uh, lot coverage two three-story hybrid type units would allow to, uh, allow to be, have a 50% lot coverage, and specifically the hybrid two-story unit, Plan 211, would be allowed to have a 55% lot coverage. Um, we'll see in a minute here the, this is the, the subdivision that, that has been uh, platted for this parcel. Again, the applicant's not changing to, or uh, proposing to change the, the design itself. These lots along the northern boundary of the future subdivision, uh, those lots will be allowed to have this hybrid one, two story mix per the proposed pad, despite the fact that it's uh, backing up to a, a commercial use and a future fire station use. Uh, the rationale here is that this hybrid two story unit puts the livable portion of the second story out on essentially the front of the elevation. So the, the potential negative impact of residents of these you know, hybrid two-story units having to look into a commercial parking lot or other uh, is relatively mitigated along with the planning commission recommendations to you know, minimize windows and openings along the northern elevations of these uh, homes along uh, the, the northern property line here. So this is a more graphical depiction of the proposed subdivision. And so with all that, uh, staff recommends approval as noted uh, with staff's conditions in the report. Jordan, just to clarify, if you can go back, okay, on the street on the east side, and you go to the first few lots, they would be single story until you get to what point? See, through here. So uh, I believe, and Mr. Earl is here and can talk about this as well, but I believe any of those lots potentially could have the hybrid model, the hybrid. Okay, two. so even the one closest to the road? And that would be all the way from north to south. Okay. And thank you. Other questions or comments at this point? Thank you. We will invite the applicant to share some comments. Good evening, Mayor, uh, members of the council. My name is Stephen Earl. I am a resident of Gilbert. I'm here tonight on behalf of Ryland Holmes, who's headquartered here in Gilbert, uh, and their president, uh, Reed Porter, who is a resident of Gilbert, along with uh, most of their employees. Uh, I guess there was some notion along the way that this was a Canadian company, but just to make it clear, they're headquartered here in, uh, in the town of Gilbert. Uh, as was just uh, noted uh, by staff, this request was heard by you a year ago. Uh, at the time it was heard by you, it, was, it, it came to you as an SF6 case without a PAD uh, addition to it. But that's not how it started. It started um, with Ryland Holmes filing a SFD request. Because this is a very unique parcel, it is only six and a half acres. It's buried without any um, exposure on a major street. So it's on 130th, but the, the uh, opening it had to Warner Road was removed because the city bought that property for the fire station that's now under construction. When you have a property that doesn't have any exposure on a, 
arterial road, it makes it more difficult to develop. This property has been passed over for decades and remains vacant because it backs up to commercial, fire station, and other uh, uses. We began that process a year ago. During the middle of the process, it was suggested by our uh, staff planner that we could actually do what we wanted in SF6. Uh, and uh, to say I was not involved in the case at that point, but uh, Reed Porter assumed that it, that was correct. And so we proceeded at that point. I became involved. Uh, the council approved this uh, request for the 27 homes. After the plat was recorded, and now that they're out actually building the project, if you had a chance to go by, you'll see that the underground utilities are in, uh, the dry utilities are going in, the perimeter wall is up, and they're working on the street, just like uh, the, the fire station that's going up right to the north of it. <clears throat> but after the final plat was recorded, they discovered that the very homes they showed you, I showed you a year ago, and the homes we showed to the neighbors cannot fit in SF6. They need these deviations that was just mentioned. Where the original request, which was FF's SFD, they would have, all of the homes would have uh, fit. So the problem was that during the process, we switched the category and didn't realize that that made it impossible to build the very homes that we were showing. Uh, we don't want to make this sound like we're packing these sites. Uh, these were homes that were shown to, uh, to everyone. I want to give you an idea of what this looks like. There was a suggestion, perhaps, that we were cramming and, and, and therefore... Oops. We would not have the setbacks that we originally showed. And we just want to make it clear. We're not adding any homes. We're not adding any density. We're not modifying the site plan. We're not modifying any of the exterior setbacks or anything else that we promise either you or the neighbors. These are the setbacks along 130th Street, uh, both uh, to our property line and to the um, edge of pavement. So there are significant setbacks built in that are landscaped. Um, and, and I just wanted to make clear that we weren't changing any of those things. All we're changing is simply getting a deviation to allow the product that we had always shown to be built. Let me show you, um, first of all, the nature of the open space that was originally shown. It's still the same. There's numerous elements of open space both at the perimeter down, uh, as well as um, interior to the site. All the homes will have landscaping installed by the um, by Ryland Homes and maintained by the HOA. These are private streets behind a gate. This is one of the models of the single-story units. There are three single-story models. Uh, there are three hybrid models and one two-story model. This is a uh, three elevations on just one of those three. You can see that these are designed to be upscale design. Um, and, and that's what we uh, told the neighbors, that these homes would be up to 4,600 square feet in size. They would be three to 600,000 square feet in value. Uh, the, the question of the hybrid issue has come up, so I just want to make sure. And uh, one other point before we get to that. This is the layout that I showed you a year ago. And on this layout, uh, we, we're, we showed the setbacks, the front, the rear, the sides, um, because we were under the assumption that this, these fit the SF6 when they actually fit SFD. But this has a number of features in it, including courtyards in the front of the project. It all, all these homes maintain the 20-foot setback. So there was a notion that, that perhaps we would bring all these homes to an unusual front yard setback. All the garages are at least 20 feet back. So that what we're bringing forward is a livable area to kind of make the, of the project more cozy. Uh, the rear yards are also, uh, there's significant courtyards throughout the project. And we didn't, we haven't changed those from what we showed you before. Um, I want to show you a hybrid home so you know what we're talking about. The photograph on the top is a hybrid home. It shows a small two-story element that's less than 20% of the overall feature of the one-story home. They just create more architectural relief and create a bonus room, but they don't have any windows on the back. Um, in fact, uh, from the back, you can't even tell it's really a two-story home. So we were 
we wanted to make sure we could build this quote hybrid because any time you go above that plane, even if it's not going to be over uh, the commercial area, you have to get a variation. So we, we feel that these create a lot more diversity of architecture in the neighborhood. This, by the way, is an actual two-story home. So there's a pretty big difference between a normal two-story home, we only have one model that's actually two stories, and then we have several that have these features. And what it looks like inside, this, by the way, is the back. You can see that on the back side of that home, you can't tell that there's a two-story element. And then, um, this shows the nature of the two-story element, which is essentially a small bonus element in the middle of the house. Um, that creates, uh, and I have photographs of you what, if you want to see what the interior does, but it creates a little opportunity there. So, we come to you tonight with a recommendation of approval from both the Planning Commission and staff. We believe that the neighbors across the street directly affected and the neighbors to the south have expressed no objection. In fact, we worked with them on some additional landscaping in their front yards. Uh, so, you know, we went to the Planning Commission and didn't believe we had any opposition from any of the commercial to the north or to the west or the housing to the south or to the east. Um, and again, we're not increasing density, so there won't be one additional car police on the road by virtue of this request. This is simply to allow the product we showed you last year to be built in the project. Thank you. From the council, any questions at this point? Thank you, Vice Mayor Cook. We do have some requests. We do, Mayor. And how, is it two requests? We have two, one for and one against. Okay. I'll invite Vice Mayor Cook to conduct this part and as well, and you can explain how long and to state your name and so forth. Well. I appreciate this. First, we'd like to welcome to the podium Owen Bam. And when you come to the podium, if you can uh, share with us your name and if you're a resident here in Gilbert. Yeah. And you have three minutes to, to speak. Thank you, Vice Mayor. My name is Owen Bainham, live at 507 West Knox Road, been there for about 15 years. Um, I sent you, uh, council members, and the mayor uh, a, a short email today, and uh, I do appreciate council member Cooper and Mayor Lewis the quick reply. Um, I do appreciate that very much. I have two things uh, pretty much to say, and uh, one of which goes right along with the last gentleman who said that um, it is an unusual shaped piece of property. And, um, but years ago, back in 1999, it was not an unusual shaped piece of property. And we, the neighbors, allowed um, the uh, zoning to be changed then so a sonic and an emergency care facility would go in. And a, um, a school was going to go in with entrance to the school off of uh, Warner Road. So shortly after that, uh, the neighbors uh, uh, allowed for, a, or they didn't object to a variance uh, so that the uh, school could have um, entrance to their property off of 130th Street. So we gave in to that. Um, the, the neighbors, I'm talking about the residents of White Fence Farms. You know, we have uh, about acre size properties. Um, about 1998, on 130th Street, um, Raven Ranch put in 17 homes that uh, wanted smaller lot sizes too, uh, and we did not object to half, half acre properties for that. Um, about five years ago, um, about 60 feet west of this property that we're talking about, a cell phone tower went in, and um, to, it, not to our advantage, but to the advantage of the, um, um, to the merchants there. I guess my point is that we, the neighbors, have been giving and giving and giving and giving. You know, last year I stood up here and I said, you know, um, no, I, I just object to, um, to this plan. And now, so I mean, that's my, my point, is that we've just been giving and giving and giving and giving and giving. So that's one of my points. My other point is that, you know, if there's 27 homes going in there, and I don't know how much they're going to cost, but I'm guessing three to four hundred thousand dollars. We're talking, we're pushing ten million dollars for a uh, a development. And I think that that the lawyers for a ten million dollar project would have certainly seen these um, changes that are are needed now. And my my feeling is that 
a year ago that these two-story homes and these um, unstaggered setbacks would have compromised their project if it had been brought up. And I just don't believe that a $10 million project lawyer would have overseen that. So those are my two points. And um, I certainly don't mind a fire station going in. Um, I, uh, I, uh, in my late teens, I was a, a volunteer fireman in Washington, D.C. Been to 200 fires and 2,000 fire calls and then um, 1972, 1974, I was a uh, Prescott hotshot uh, for the Prescott National Forest and we all remember J June 30th, 2013. So that's all I have to say. Thank you so much for your time. Well, and thank you. We'd like to welcome to the podium Lynn Stanett. Lynn, if you could um, let us know if you're a Gilbert resident and you have three minutes to speak. Starting now, Mr. Mayor, uh, council people, thanks for having me um, speak. I've been in Gilbert since 1972, and I've lived on 130th Street in White Fence Farms since then. Um, my house was the second house in that subdivision, so I've seen a lot of growth. I used to work for the city of Gilbert as the school nurse and district nurse for 10 years, so I'm very familiar with the town of Gilbert, and of course I love it here. What I don't love is coming up, and that's that new subdivision across the street from my house. I like the subdivision. I've been watching the construction. I'm happy with the setback. The only thing I am still not happy with is adding another 27 two-car garages, which will then be approximately, what, 50 more cars coming and going on 130th Street twice a day as they go back and forth to work so they can afford to live in those expensive houses. I am pleading, pleading for some speed bumps to be put on that road. There is a half a mile from Warner Road to Knox Road where a car can really hit it, and I watch them hit it. They come in and they go out from Cobble Creek all day long and when this new subdivision is in, they're going to be turning right and left. They turn left, they're going to be right in front of my house. When they turn right, they'll miss it. But when they come in the other way from uh, Cooper Road, they're going to be going by my house again. I'm really tired of the traffic. And it's not going to get better. So I don't know how we can work this, but I really want some traffic control. Four years ago, I requested a, a speed sign even, and there still hasn't been one. 25 miles an hour coming on in off Warner, there has still been promises, but no speed sign. They did put one in uh, going north, but I still don't have one coming in off Warner Road. So even though the subdivision is being built now, of course, the road is closed to except for local traffic, and that's six of us that are local on 130th, but I know the traffic is going to be terrible soon. So to whom I am speaking, <laughs> please let me have a speed bump or two on that road. Thank you. Lynn, thank you. So if I, my math is right, 42 years yes. in your current home. and 42 years. Thank you for your service to the town. And if I'm also understanding correctly, you are not opposed to the what's going in, it's more the concern about the additional traffic and the request to have speed bumps. Right, it's too hard to be opposed to it when it's half done already. I'm more happy with that than the tumbleweeds that, and trash I used to have to clean up on my property when it was an empty piece of dirt. Okay, so I'm okay with houses. It, once they get them sorted out, it's the traffic that comes with them that I'm upset about. Thank you. Thank you. Jordan, why don't we have you come forward again and um, maybe at least put the map of the subdivision up again in that one. Thank you. And, and questions or comments from council? Councilmember Taylor. The request about the speed sign, are we just talking a garden variety speed limit or is it something something more? I don't know. 
we want to clarify that. Something about children in the area. I mean, there's sure. a couple varieties. And Jordan, do you have any comments on that? Had that been discussed prior? Thank you, Mayor, uh, Councilman Taylor. The and I have to admit, this is uh, Planner Williams's case. I have not personally reviewed the traffic study, but my understanding is from traffic engineering that the traffic study for this 27 lot subdivision, those volumes, that peak hour volume, the average daily trip volume, none of the warrants we would look at um, required additional analysis, required a, a signal at, at the intersection. Uh, so, so that's one issue. The issue of providing a you know, speed limit sign for southbound 130th Street uh, may very well be an issue. I, I don't know that it's necessarily an issue for this proposed development. It's something that we can look at, uh, may, maybe looking at getting new trip numbers for that intersection, that street, working with traffic engineering to either do speed bumps, signage, what, you know, in other words, let, let traffic staff look at this issue specifically and develop the best mediation, whether that's a sign or a bump or, or both. So for the council, I, I think tonight we would be proceeding, but we could ask town leadership, and I, I think I'll just initiate this, that uh, independent of the vote, if we could ask town leadership to have some follow-up with uh, traffic and have our traffic uh, engineers take a look at that and then give feedback specifically to Lynn and Owen and, and to council too, but thank you. Other comments, Councilmember Taylor? Vice Mayor Cook? Um, Jordan, I, I can't remember. Uh, um, the, the fire station is going in there, is a two-story building, correct? I, I uh, uh, Mayor Lewis, uh, Vice Mayor, I have not seen those plans, but I would assume so. The, the fire bay alone uh, on any new fire station is going to be. And I'm just trying to compare the height of the top of the um, two-story facility. Is that going to be much higher than what we're seeing as it relates to the plans for some of the homes? I apologize for the delay. Our understanding is the fire station is approximately 40 feet in height. Uh, these structures would all be below 30. Yeah. And one more question. I, I can't remember about for the fire station. Typically, we usually have a traffic light the letting the fire trucks come out of a fire station. Is there going to be a, a light there as well in front of the fire station? Uh, and how does that how does that navigate through that? 130th Street. A great question, Vice Mayor. There indeed will be a um, a fire station signal, which is, as, as you know, only activates when there's a, a response call. Uh, that signal will be located, kind of hard to see on this site plan, but essentially right here where there's an adjacent cut to get through to westbound Warner. So it will be located several feet west of 130th Street potentially providing some traffic calming to that area, but, but not the intent of that. So it is programmed for the fire station. Jordan, this, to Owen's concerns and also the email he sent, this is not what he was asking for, but I'll just also turn to the applicant. If the question I alluded to before, there were some concerns about the height and I'm not sure if I'm seeing the exact numbers, but it would be, you know, the houses on the far right. If they were to be the one-story model instead of the two-story, would the applicant, would that cause a problem? Or, and I, again, that's not even a formal request, it's just a, a probe. And has that been considered? Please. Sure, please. And whether or not, and again, I don't know if that's a request, but it's just a, a hypothetical question. If that were something that would help, w would that uh, impact uh, the current design? Uh, Mayor uh, Lewis, uh, to answer your question, you're, you're talking about one, two, three, four uh, lots on the east side of this project. One of the reasons we created these setbacks and the perimeter walls was to address that very issue of getting far, farther away. We met with the three lot owners across the street. 
they were far more concerned with the headlights coming out of the project, and that's why we worked with them to install landscaping in their front yards to address the issue of headlights. Three of our uh, models are one story only, and three more of them are the hybrids that I showed you that have a one story element that doesn't have any windows at that second level that face anywhere but the front, which would be interior to this project. So they don't face to the north where the commercial is, and they certainly don't face to the to the east where the neighbors are. Uh, so, you know, there's one two story home that, that, that actually has windows, and those windows would not be, and first of all, the home's less than 30 feet, uh, and, and we've done some line of sight drawings, and that would not have any impact to the east. But if, if your question is, can we eliminate that one actual two story home, uh, we'd probably prefer to have clear story windows on that side sure. okay. so that we eliminate the issue of any privacy. An interesting probe, and um, I have driven by many times. This is not too far from Town Hall. I paid more attention to the fire station uh, construction. So what is the stage right now? As, as Lynn said, it's under construction. Yes, uh, this project is under construction. All the underground utilities have been installed, which means there's a new sewer line in 130th Street, and that sewer line provides sewer to this project. It also, serendipitously perhaps, provides sewer to the folks on the east side of the street, and I think one has already tapped into that line. Historically, those folks have had septic tanks, but now there's a new sewer line that we've installed. We've also installed the water line, we are doing all that. We are installed the wall, perimeter wall around the project, and and we we will be done with with this pre work um, and actually have pavement and and uh, going into lots by the end of the year. So we'll be trying to sell homes next early next year. And so to the council, I know a year ago we were trying to do a lot of things uh, because residents to the east had been there a long time and. We wanted to make sure that they could continue to enjoy uh, the lifestyle, and that has happened. So I guess any other comments, and we can close the public hearing, please, Councilmember yeah. Cooper. Mayor, I just wanted to reiterate what I think I where I heard you at the end uh, of your comments, and I, I feel like the applicant has done a really good job of working with the neighbors and coming up with a good solution. And I didn't really hear a call or a cry out for uh, that kind of a. Uh, stipulation at this point. I, I like the project as is and would be uh, ready to move forward. Thank you. Any other comments? Okay, I will close the public hearing on agenda item 17 and entertain a motion. Mayor, I move that we approve it as it's been presented to us. Second. Thank you. Including I the idea that there'll be some follow up with the neighbors about yes. the traffic mitigation. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Yes. With, with that motion, second, please vote. That's approved with a 6 of vote. Thank you. And Owen and Lynn, thank you for coming to share your comments. I'm going to skip over agenda item 21, and we'll move to agenda item 22. Mayor, was that a 6 of vote or a 6 to 3 vote? <coughs> Sorry. Um, uh, for clarification, that was a 6 0 vote. <laughs> and it wasn't even close to a 4 1 vote either. <laughs> Thank you. So, on the local business. Why don't we clarify at the end? Okay. Well. On agenda item 22, local business, it would be helpful to have a quick overview from uh, staff. And uh, Town Manager Banjer on agenda item, or Cindy, please. Mayor and Council, um, Doug is in his office, so Don went to get him. Um, and he would provide a better overview, but I can start. Um, the local business opportunity policy is um, 
pretty much a vendor outreach policy. I mean, it, it doesn't, re here is Doug. Anyway, it, I'm gonna let you take over. <laughs> He's better at this, I I'm promise. sorry. Uh, Mayor Lewis, council members, thank you. Um, um, the policy that you have before you tonight does not restrict competition in any way. Um, this particular policy, its primary elements are a vendor outreach effort, which would consist of both regional efforts with uh, organizations such as the Gilbert Chamber of Commerce, uh, NIGP, and so forth, as well as town-specific training events in educating our local vendors in how to use the uh, procurement code to their advantage, how to compete for the town's business. Uh, secondly, it would consist of a vendor database. We currently have no uh, visibility, uh, or vendors rather locally do not have visibility with the town for any purchases under $50,000. We currently use the Procure AZ vendor database with the state procurement office for all formal purchases over $50,000. Uh, this would simply give uh, businesses in the town, visibility to town departments, where town departments are not aware of their uh, being here perhaps, and uh, it would also um, allow businesses an opportunity to be seen. Uh, so this does not restrict competition in any way, shape, or form. There is a requirement that if there is at least one local vendor that that vendor be contacted for a quote. It's not guaranteed that that vendor will be getting, given a contract. Uh, also, you will notice in the policy, it states that it does not restrict town departments from seeking additional competition from both uh, local vendors, other local vendors, or non-local vendors. Secondly, we specifically avoided the word preference for several reasons. First of all, we are aware of the legal climate right now. The city of Tucson is being sued for its local preference policy, and I would point out that that is a transaction privilege tax preference policy that they have where they deduct tax from calculation of the bid price. We do not do that here at the town of Gilbert. Uh, secondly, I would not put my name to a policy that used the word preference because that goes against my grain as a uh, procurement officer, as a purchasing professional. Uh, we cannot show preference to anybody and so that is something that I scrupulously avoided in the policy. And the intent of the policy, and this is probably the most important thing, is not preference. It is simply to uh, make the town aware of the uh, existence of businesses here locally that can provide various goods and services, and to give businesses an opportunity to be seen by departments and be contacted for uh, competitive purpose. Uh, I think that there was a lot of work that was that has gone into this. We did meet with the uh, Small Business Alliance as well as the chamber. We did take uh, suggestions from them. For instance, one of the earlier provisions we had in here was that if there were 10 or more Gilbert businesses, <clears throat> we would not seek additional competition um, beyond that, um, basically be limited to simply Gilbert businesses. The Small Business Alliance pointed out to us correctly that that could limit someone, for instance, from Chandler or Mesa who has successfully done business with the town for many years. And so at their suggestion, we took that out and we simply included a requirement for at least one vendor, one local business, be contacted for quotes. Uh, at this time, I can take questions if you have any. Thank you. Any questions for Doug? Any discussion? We do have one request to speak, but Councilmember Daniels. I, I just thought I'd go ahead and um, state some of the, I guess, ideas behind the conversation. This has been an ongoing conversation for nearly two years now, and it was brought to our attention by our chamber. And I think one of the most important elements of this policy, and one of the reasons I, we had an opportunity to maybe make this part of an internal procedure and not necessarily a policy, but I think one of the benefits to the community um, is that we are showing through action and through policy that local business is important to us and that we want to make sure they have a fair opportunity to compete um, when an entity like the town has been doing business and probably has established relationships with many different organizations that have provided um, services and, and uh, goods, commodities to the town. Um, it 
can become one of those comfortable things where you've worked very, very comfortably with a different uh, entity. This gives us an opportunity to really step outside of our procurement comfort zone, if you will, and um, seek out local businesses to give them an opportunity to compete. Nowhere in this policy does it indicate that they will be given preference. Nowhere in this policy does it indicate that someone will not be given preference because they're not part of the town. And so I think it's a really important element. This is an important statement to make to our local businesses, and we've defined local in a couple different ways here uh, that's listed in, in the policy, but I think this is an important message to send that we want our local businesses to be able to compete for business in the town. So that's that was sort of the genesis, I think, of it becoming a policy versus an internal procedure. Thank you. Vice Mayor Cook, at this point, why don't we have our request to speak? Mayor, we'd like to invite Kathy Tilkey to the um, podium. Kathy, if you can share your name and if you're a Gilbert resident, and you'll have three minutes to speak. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Kathy Tilkey, representing the Gilbert Chamber of Commerce, and I am a proud resident of Gilbert, Arizona. Um, thank you so much for the opportunity to speak. I know this isn't the public hearing piece, and actually, I think Councilman, Councilwoman Daniels probably said everything that I was going to say, but um, I did want to thank um, Councilwoman Daniels for shepherding this for us for the last two years, and um, Cindy and Doug have worked with us throughout the process, you know, having a purchasing department is new in Gilbert, and Doug has done a fantastic job of taking it from ground zero to where you are today. And this policy has been very important to us because as um, Councilman, I'm just going to call you Jen, I'm sorry, it's going to be difficult, I'll keep stumbling. Um, as Jen mentioned, uh, we have heard from businesses that it's very hard to get to the departments to introduce their business to them. And so this policy will allow them to come in, register with the town of Gilbert, be able to, to provide uh, a quote, but more importantly, earn your business. And I think that's the key to this whole um, policy. It's not guaranteed. They have to earn your business just like anybody else does, and it does not eliminate the opportunity for businesses outside of Gilbert to become part of your vendor list as well. I really hope that you'll support it. That's a, another great day in Gilbert as we um, tell businesses how important they are to us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other discussion? Council Member Peterson? Mayor, uh, when we first started talking about local preference, I had quite a few concerns. Um, I'm happy to say that I think the way the policies come forward has really addressed most of those concerns. Uh, I've always been concerned with the idea of some bias in the way that we look at the bids. I've also been concerned about um, picking things that might damage our taxpayers by spending more just to be local. Um, I think the way that this work is at work working out will actually benefit the taxpayers in a lot of ways. Um, things like what we've seen, we had 553 requests for bids and we only got one responded on the pool, uh, that pool contract that we saw tonight. That's unfortunate. I think that with more vendor outreach, and that's what's beautiful about this, is yes, there's some emphasis on local businesses, but the database and the training are both available to businesses outside of Gilbert as well. And so I think we just foster more uh, competition overall, which means the taxpayers win. And I, I think it's a great step in the right direction. I appreciate everyone's work on it. And so I just wanted to say that. Thank you, Vice Mayor Cook. Mayor and the Council, the, th the part that I really like as well is that this is a one-year pilot project. We get to um, try it out for a year, and then we come back next year to evaluate if there are things that we need to tweak or not tweak, or if it was successful or not. So I'm very much in favor of trying out for one year. Thank you. It appears we should move forward. I will entertain a motion. Mayor Lewis, I move that we approve um, agenda item 22. Is there a second? Second. With that motion, second, please vote. That's approved with a 6 0 vote. Thank you. Agenda item 23 is also a policy item considering the approval regarding the investment of public funds. Is there any discussion on that, or would we want to proceed? Okay, I will entertain a motion. Move to approve agenda item 23. Is there a second? Second. With that, with that motion and second, please vote. That's approved with a 6 0 vote. Thank you. Returning to agenda item 21, 
Boards, Commission, and Committee reports. Council Member Taylor. Mayor, I wanted to update uh, the council here and, um, and, and, you know, for the benefit of the public, some of the great things that are happening in the Parks and Rec uh, Board and, and in the department. We had a meeting uh, this week. A lot of great things that, that um, were highlighted there. If I could just mention just a few things. We're heading into cool season where all of these great Parks and Rec um, programs are cranking up. One of the things that hit mailboxes was a, a new thing, a direct mail piece here that when you open up the big item there, there's a big calendar uh, that highlights just so many wonderful things. And maybe you'll touch on those later. I'm not going to go into details, but there's definitely extra copies here at Town Hall for that. And just encourage everybody to get involved in some of the wonderful parks and recreation programs that we have. Certainly Gilbert Days is the highlight for the year, and that's coming up. Um, tonight we approved um, some a good amount of money to renovate Mesquite Junior High Pool. I know there's a lot of citizens that are anxious for the improvements uh, with that pool because that's one of the, the big um, the pools that's used for the swimming program, and I might touch on that in just a second here. I wanted to, I'm going to skip over a couple things in the interest of time, but um, lots of uh, new playgrounds have been um, already updated this year and more playgrounds are on the way, which is a fun thing because this is such a you know family friendly town. Um, I think I'll I think I'll just highlight that, but it's upwards of about two million dollars that's going directly into our parks to update them, make the playground safer, um, some new amenities that are more current and, and um, exciting in some of the parks that we see in our community. So one of the things that was um, passed to me that I wanted to pass to you, Mayor, and the, and the council uh, from a couple members of the commission, they really appreciated this council's investment in the Parks and Rec program and, and the support and the, the investment in some of the one-time areas I've highlighted. And um, I just wanted to pass that thanks uh, to you, Mayor, and um, Patrick, you and your staff. Uh, I know the citizens are pretty excited about what's already happened what's coming up and the investment we continue to make in parks and rec. So, Mayor, thank you for letting me just update the council on uh, the parks program. Thank you. Other, Councilmember Peterson. Mayor, just one last plug. Um, it'll be our last chance to do it here, but uh, October 25th, Saturday, is Make a Difference Day. Uh, we continue to be impressed and grateful for the generosity of the Gilbert citizens. Um, in fact, uh, just a couple days ago, I reported to Council Member Daniels, who um, was asking some questions about the event, but we have a, a little over 900 opportunities for volunteers. Uh, we had just a little over 500 at that point. And just within the last few days, we've filled all but about, I want to say, 40 to 60 of those. So there are still some. So if you haven't registered yet, go to gilbertcan.org and sign up. There are a couple projects left, um, but it's been amazing, Mayor. We, we really appreciate it, and uh, it's going to be a great benefit to everyone involved. Everybody wins when we serve each other, so thanks, Mayor. And thank you for your leadership. What a volunteer community. Appreciate it. Any other comments? Report from town manager. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Members of the Council, I don't have a lot of good news to report tonight, um, <laughs> but what I can report on is that our deputy town clerk, Lisa, has completed all of her necessary certifications and is now a fully certified clerk in the state of Arizona. So congratulations, Lisa. Also, I uh, wanted to let you know about something that will be coming up fairly quick on a council agenda. There's some volatility in the equity markets, but we're currently reviewing an opportunity um, that's been created for one of our bond issuance. We anticipate bringing something to you in the first December council meeting uh, for a bond issuance in which we project we could save about 6% or just under $2 million. So just as soon as we get that nailed down with our financial advisor, we'll bring that forward and brief you on it. Um, and and again, anticipate that on our December, uh, first December council meeting. Thank you. Report from council. Report from mayor. 
We did have a chance from a regional perspective to participate in the bioscience partnering, pro, partnering building that is in downtown Phoenix and also to participate on a panel with the Dutch American Business Alliance. And I go back to what was just said a few minutes ago. This is another great day in Gilbert. October 16th, I had a chance uh, to Gloria and Kathleen to read the letter from President Wiseman of St. Xavier University and the, see the certificate from the state that the university is now authorized to begin operation. Uh, we have Champ who will, Champ or Cougar will start to make the rounds in downtown Gilbert and others, the community can come and see Champ, so we're looking forward to that. Also to the council, I will note that uh, our town clerk has sent to us a request to review uh, liaison assignments and she's looking for feedback two weeks from today. And thank you again for all the efforts you make with your various assignments. And then uh, council member Taylor, that Parks, could I just have that for a moment? I am so grateful to our wonderful town manager that he has agreed on Saturday, the 22nd, the Gilbert Days prayed that he will be wearing a San Francisco Giant jersey. And he's volunteered to do that out of the goodness of his heart. And I, does it get any better than that? And so we thank our town manager for those efforts. Look forward to that San Francisco Giant jersey. And what a manager. And on that. Mayor, could I ask you, are there one or two ends in Reneg? <laughs> <laughs> Dana, do we need to bring up that minute and a half video? Probably not, but uh, we, we could at least make sure the community knows there's a wonderful um, video from Gilbert Digital from the town manager, something about some baseball National League Championship Giants versus the Cardinals, and, and I'll leave it at that. Encourage the community to go out and find it under Patrick Banger, St. Louis Cardinals, and they can see it. It'd be, it'd be a terrific thing to watch. So we do express appreciation for all the efforts for tonight's meeting. We will now, well, I will entertain a motion to recess our regular meeting and reconvene in executive session. So moved. Second. Is there a second? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say nay. Thank you. We will meet in executive session. <laughs>